Winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. I don't say any of these things if my name is not breached by these people on your platform. Hold it, Tommy. Hold it, Tommy. So you a comedian, <laughs> you a radio host, uh -oh. yes. and now you got a game show? I'm finna go on Shannon Sharp show and accuse you of you stealing my whole damn career. I thought you were supposed to go there and enlighten people. That is entirely too hot. That's all I'm saying. You are not supposed to be at the gas station making life decisions. You just at the pump. Just Negro, did I eat today? I can't get no half a tank. I got six cigarettes. I can't even do it. That used to be, if you had 10, 15 dollars, you could go to the gas station with confidence. Because you knew you was either going to be full or damn near full. If you had a 20, you didn't even talk to the person at the counter. You just 20 on the left, bitch. Used to be, if you put $15 in your tank, you had time to bond with your vehicle. You had time to put the nozzle in and set the clicker and look through your car and clean off the dashboard and look through your CDs and run in the store and get some Pringles and a snapper and it'll still be pumping. Now if you put $15 in, you can't even turn around good for that summer bitch click. As soon as you put it in, just click, click. Gas, $4 a gallon. Can't even pump gas like you used to no more. $4 a gallon? You remember when you used to go to pump and put the nozzle in there and hit it? Be sitting there talking, be on your phone, hey, what's happening? Be walking around, cleaning the windshield. <laughs> Speaking to gay, hey, girl, what's happening? What you doing? <laughs> hey, hey, you. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay, you go in there, bring me a wine. Cool. Cat Williams won Cedric the Entertainer's and Heiser Bush Best Los Angeles Comic Award. You still a dude's joking to give him an award, and then 10 years later, you don't know nothing about it. <laughs> 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 hey, but I but I promise you this. What? If he sees me again before he sees you, he'll be talking different when you see him. They came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth king. I got the offer. Then what happened? But I turned it down. Why? Because you shit on Bernie. And I know the truth. You think I'm gonna let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? Yeah. Now, especially when I do my single dates and I'm trying to school her. You don't do your material around a lot of comedians. <laughs> <laughs> That's like standing in front of the police. You don't do it. <laughs> They mean well, but they, they sit on the side. Ooh, that's funny. Next thing you know, you see it on HBO or something. You be sitting at home. That shit mine, you know? But ain't nobody gonna believe first come, first serve, you know? So when you do new stuff, you never, I'm telling you, for you comics coming up, never bring your stuff out in front of a house full of comedians. You will never work a lot. <laughs> Especially established comedians like myself, you'll never work a lot. I got too much pride. I can't take something that ain't mine. You know what I mean? I can't go up and say something, man. The kick about going up there is making people laugh about something you wrote. When Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason you was supposed to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. Not it was going to be called the Kings of Comedy. It was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. Of course, you got to close if it's your tour. That's why it was such a big deal. But you couldn't do it because you can't beat the best. And until you humble yourself, you will forever be kinged by the king. And because you finally did it, because you didn't have no other choice, and now that he gone, you gonna act like, he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. There's some slick I mean, one of your stand-up, um, one of your stand-up, you, you was being sarcastic, saying that if Trick Daddy can own a restaurant, you can do anything. Look, well. What did other people get? Fuck what I know. <laughs> that ain't my family tree. I thought somebody was gonna speak up. <laughs> no, for the first time, it don't matter what the fuck you look like, you can fuck it. Trick Daddy is rich and famous. <laughs> I don't know who you is. You ain't uglier than Trick Daddy, man. <laughs> yeah, no. That man look like a number two, a foul <laughs> He can make it, you can make it. Right. That man got herpes, syphilis, gonorrhea, lupus, and he got a restaurant and a cooking show, and he eat ass. <laughs> Motivation. Right. All the people gotta change is if you. Look at. <laughs> <Tight. laughs> Keep my name out your mouth. Keep Ricky Smiley name out your mouth. Keep all OGs name out your mouth. If you don't like a person, if you don't like a person, you don't say it. I told people that I didn't think you was funny. I ain't never said I didn't like you. And I'm glad I didn't never say I didn't like you. Because me, by me not thinking you were funny, I actually saw you one day and I was laughing my ass off. I was crying laughing one day. Remember that little boy put you in the hair like I was crying fucking laughing that day. You scary curls, have perm wearing ass. Stop, man. Listen, man. Stop talking about other n****s. 
to be relevant in the game, the trend. Because I thought you did Mark Curry's show over after he had just done hanging with Mr. Cooper. Why would you do all of that man's stuff that he did on his show on yours? And then do the dude stand up when you go on the road. And then you never put Mark Curry on your show or nothing. Like you made enough money, you know? Wow. You made enough money, you did enough. You know, what? why are you on my material? Right. You know, what's that about? You right. know, and then, you know, people want to jump up. Oh, he didn't know, he didn't steal your... So yes, he did. Yeah. I mean, no one else has did that. Mm -hmm. to, so to this us. was on his talk show. Which talk was his TV talk show? His TV talk show. Okay, this was uh, the one he had on NBC just recently. Whatever, yeah. Okay. Mark Curry says that you're still stealing his jokes. Hey man, listen to me. Yeah. Now this, I'm getting sick of this right here. Yeah. Mark Curry need to grow up. Steve Harvey ain't been on stage since 2015. Well, you said you used him on one of your shows. Ask Mark Curry what joke he talking about. Tell him to grow I, up, man. I think it was on Little Big Shots. He was making the record. Are you kidding me? Yeah. He said. Are you kidding me? He said that he confronted you about it before, and then even and after he that, still he still again. ain't said what joke it is. Get a life, get a career. Right. Go do something, man. Well, he's thinking this is gonna help him. This, he's thinking this is gonna help him get a, a stand-up special now with like Netflix or HBO. Well, good. Go ahead and get one. I got five of them, six of them. Yeah. Go get one. That'll be good. I'll be happy for him. Do you think he will get one out of I this? I think he deserves one. Yeah. Yeah. Halloween was a trip. Halloween. We couldn't afford no Halloween costumes. Hey, kids, please. Mama sent us down to the liquor store, put boxes on us. We didn't know what we were. I don't know what we are. <laughs> I don't know. She didn't tell us. I think with UPS, I guess, I don't know. Every Halloween, I had the same outfit on. Every year. I just had a brown box. I wasn't nothing sad, I just not asked my father, could I have a new outfit? And he said, no, just wear the same one. It was just a brown box. And he just told me to tell everybody I was a UPS man. Uh, Guy Tory did a beautiful special about the comedy store and Fat Tuesday, where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made... All lies. Steve and Cedric never performed at the comedy store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Laugh Factory. Got to Yo, God, got to I need to address this Cat Williams situation, man. I normally don't get into stuff like this, uh, but since my name was mentioned, um, I need to clear some things up real quick. First of all, I'm not taking any sides, man. Uh, you know what? Uh, he mentioned Fat Tuesdays. He mentioned um, my documentary on Amazon Prime right now, which is streaming strong. And he mentioned uh, it was a beautifully done documentary, which it was. But we didn't. T we told no lies. And it was mentioned that in the, in the Club Shay Shay interview that um, Cedric did not come through Fat Tuesdays, which is not true. Check it out. Cedric the Entertainer and Joe Torrey, 1995, Fat Tuesdays. The Cat Williams himself, film director F. Gary Gray, Chris Rock, Guy Torrey, Cedric the Entertainer. Some closer looks. Cedric the Entertainer! Started out as one night. They had him on the basketball court, and it looked like he looked like he moving pretty good. I mean, yeah, he, I mean moved, he, he moved pretty good. But man, that wasn't no goddamn fofo. Come on now. No hell no. That's no. You know, look at just looking at the video. That's that's a long way. That's a little ways, man. That's a little ways. Okay, so Mike Epps said, I put everybody on and still putting comics on today. None of y'all brave enough or care enough to work with him or come around him. Stop making this shit so bad. We comedian. I put him in a movie when no one wants to work with him. Some of that shit he said was true, and some of it was not. At the end of the day, we all black men in a business that is not ours. I cracked on his jacket because that's what comics do. All this shit is marketing dummies. All this shit he said, y'all mad at me. Get the fuck out of here. We having fun. Y'all stressing. Also, uh, Mike Epps put out another picture. He said, I know what the problem is. We all need another Friday. Put everybody in a movie. All of us. Hey, the best win on screen. Fuck all the internet. Shit. Forget the money. Forget the status. Forget Hollywood. Let's go big, bro. At Ice Cube, make history, yo. All right, I did get a little jealous, man. Cat broke the internet and didn't say my name, good or bad. I need to press too, nigga. Shit. <laughs> say something about me in there, man. <laughs> Say something bad about me. I don't care. I got a special coming out. I need the press. Man, we need a movie together. Damn. Yep. I mean, what, what did Cat do to Ali? What did he do to you, man? So let's go to the store. Let me speed it up. Shreveport. We in Shreveport. The song out is um, Every Day I'm Hustling. I walk out to get ghetto. I turn back around. You know how the arena people look in the goddamn yellow shirts. All of them are locked arms standing in front of the door. I'm like, hey, let me slide through y'all. And the lady who was in front of, sitting in front of my door, she said, Ali, I can't let you back in the building. I said, what? Ali, I can't let you back in the building. I say, for what? So they don't know what's going on. It's just been a sign. Don't let Ali Steve back in this building. Okay, cool. Cats, Matt, security at the time, his dude's name is Carl. Carl comes and he's talking over the shoulders of the security people. I'm standing outside, me and Ghetto. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, Carl, what's up? He's like, man, Cat, I don't know what the fuck is up. Man, Cat, I don't want you back in the building. I say, what? Man, he ain't say nothing. And, but I can see Cat and his white boy talking. Like, I can see them. And I'm like, what the fuck is up? So this nigga turns back to me. They, they wrote me a check and they came and paid me. And th that's how they paid me. I'm standing there. And over the shoulder of security, I just see a check come over his arm. I see niggas paying me oh, like I'm some fucking bum nigga. Like y'all, I hand out. Okay, cool. It's two ways I can handle this. I could be an ignorant nigga and just be law running nigga in the streets, then do it in the streets. But then a nigga open himself up. And he said, nigga, this celebrity boxing thing, nigga, I started it. And um, they niggas looked at me like I was crying. I said, you started. No, first people I saw was Willie D and Melly Mel. And nigga, way before you, nigga, you wasn't around at the time. And I said, oh shit, maybe I can get this shit settled with this nigga. 
in his ring for a bag. Because he be talking his boxing shit. So since you started, let's make it full circle. You haven't had a battle. Once you started with me, now nah, I want to fight. Because I'm, 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 I'm good with engaging in the war. And I like that you think that you're going to win. Because you don't understand what I, the, the level that I'm going to go to. Like right now, it's people saying, well, cat got them hands for you. Cool. I want to know. I think the world want to know what happened between you and Alisa D. I know you said the you world talk couldn't about possibly want to know that. Know, He's man. not famous enough for the world to want to know that. Uh, at least because my side of the world doesn't want to know that. See, well, my side of the world. Here's, here's the thing. What happened, man? A lot of times, what liars do first is they set up a narrative and a scenario. Like Michael Blackson just got on national TV and told people, "Yeah, I got a beef with Cat Williams, and Cat is mad at me about this, and because I said this, and I didn't even mean it like that." And the whole time, he's never talked to me. That's how he feels. He's heard I'm angry. I've not had a conversation with him. It's the same with your Ali Sadiq. So now if that's the story, then let me see if I got this correct. A guy I've never met was supposed to be doing a show with me. And I got so angry, even though I hadn't met him, that I had security keep him out of the building. See, that's the problem with lies. They're, they're faulty from their inception, sir. I'm the person in the story that doesn't have a grudge to feel. I don't care why I didn't like Cat Williams. I would get to the bottom of it. This is not one of those stories. First of all, the actual truth of this matter is... Every city that I go to, I already have the comedians who are opening up for me. Not just this tour, but for the 17, 100 city tours previous to this. I never go to the city and go, hey, do you guys have some comics here? I'd like to add them to my show. I just don't do it. I travel with the comedians um, that are coming to your city. We're one unit and one team when we come. That is to let you understand that no comic was fin to come join us that evening because there isn't space for it. I still have to do an hour at the end of this. There's a limited amount of time. So we could just start there. Second of all, I don't care where you're from, what the venue is, how cool you are with the people that work there. Cat Williams show means Cat Williams show. That means don't nothing move but the money. There ain't no loud talking and voice raising. And Well, I, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? How, let me look on the advertisements and see, do I see your name or face, sir, whoever you may be? Where would you even get the entitlement to be having this question? This is like me insisting that the Lakers put me on as a starter. And I won't take no for an answer. It's ridiculous. You don't even play in our league. And that's before I knew who you were. Now that I know who you are, I'm just ashamed because you took something personal that couldn't have been personal. I didn't meet you. That's how it would have gone if I wasn't there. Because the truth is, I wasn't there. All of this happened before I got there. He said, I'm supposed to be on this show. I said, well... Well, maybe he was expecting to get some sort of a payment. And, and now he thinks he doesn't get to get paid because we already have a tour. I, I wouldn't want that. Pay him for performing. So he got the check of the performer. This is what he's angry about. Imagine the audacity. I would have gave him the celebrity boxing match he asked for if I thought he was a celebrity. Oh, come on, man. You know Ali is a celebrity. Come on, Sir, I'm not talking. I, I didn't mean that disparagingly. Yeah. I meant that in ticket sales, my n Ticket sales. That's what I meant. I mean, I'm doing 7,000 in your hometown while you go do 300. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm talking statistics. I'm talking about the biggest and baddest thing going. And you a person trying to get in. Why would you be mad? It's, it's ridiculous. I'm offended. <laughs> I'm offended. You believe it's about ticket sales? Yeah, it's always been about ticket sales and comedy. Sorry you caught me at a bad time, but since you asked me, I said I'd jump on because I'm still barely waking it, up. It, I'm not even camera ready. This ain't, this ain't even about comedy. Yeah, about what, what happened is, is what, what, I'm going to give you a synopsis. Yeah, I got to be it's fair, dude, you know, to be it's fair. A dude named, it's a dude named Dancing Dave that, that's yes. in the, that was celebrity boxing, Dancing Dave. Didn't say, he took a fight on two weeks' notice against another celebrity boxer. They paid Dancing Dave 150000 They paid the other they paid the other one 250000 It wasn't about no, it wasn't about no tickets. It's about the celebrities boxing. You only doing um three minute, three rounds, one minute. So the tickets are gonna be sold anyway. I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying when you make your point in that manner. When I'm saying that I bring my own people. I don't know why he was there. I, I paid him because he just showed up. But I was there for two days. I performed both days. The first night I performed in front of Ashima Franklin. The next night I performed after Ashima Franklin. It was just that it's just that simple. And I wish I was a sentimental nigga who would hold pictures and all that. But all this can be confirmed with Alex Thomas and mostly everybody who was rational that was there. They're like, no, it's no way for this nigga not to say he don't know this nigga because he's been in a vehicle with this nigga voluntarily. I'm riding with Ali to the hotel. Right. And, and then the other part is this. How do you write a nigga a check that you don't know his name? That it's up random. So in your in your business of comedy, in your business of comedy, that you know comedy. So you have went to places and random 
comics just showed up and people paid them because they they showed up and they wanted to perform. Uh, he wanted to perform. I felt bad he didn't get a chance to, so I paid this nigga for two days. <laughs> well, you know, he's kind. Of, that's kind of how he is. Uh, I knew you was gonna say, well, it. "Hey man, if you watch this, watch this, brother. If you yeah. look up that, if you look up his network, you Google that nigga's network and you Google mine. We we are, we five hundred thousand dollars apart. No, no, so why would this no, no. why would this nigga give me fifteen? Why would this nigga give me a random ass? He just walk up and get fifteen hundred dollars to for one performance. Damn, I didn't even I didn't cash the check. I didn't cash the right. check. I gave I gave the money back. I didn't care. I put a nigga check up. I jumped in my fucking truck. And nobody in Houston is going. The seventy thousand, the seven thousand fuckers that was there, nobody's going to believe this shit. Nigga, I'm like, wait a minute. No. That says uh, that, bro. That said, and I'm and I'm talking. And I'm being real, bro. And this ain't no arrogant shit. It's it's like I don't know nobody who you could find that does not know me. And you saying that you've been doing stand up for tw for thirteen years and you don't know me. Yeah, but don't, don't take it as no, an insult. No, no, I'm, I don't, what, 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 no. What, what I'm, I'm not taking this as an insult. Yes. I'm taking this as this. This is what I'm taking this as. This is what I'm taking this as. L.A. That's all I'm taking it as, as L.A. And, I, and I've always said this about L.A. L.A. comics and comedy is in a bubble yes. that, that they have no idea what's really happening in the stand-up. That is absolutely true. So I'm not, 100%. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking it as hands on. I'm just saying, and it, I can understand because you just said you're from LA. So it, 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 it nullifies and explains a lot to me. Yeah, because you're right about that. We actually are in a bubble. We believe that we're the best of anybody in the United States. We believe we're care, we're comparable to New York City. We believe all these things. Hmm. All right, that part is true. The only difference is, is I don't really aspire to that anymore. Which once, all right. This is what and I used to say this about LA comics. LA comics believe all what you said. Yes. With one successful comic from LA, DL Hewitt. One successful comic from LA. Everybody else is in yes. France, but LA believe LA believes that wholeheartedly yes. with one championship. Things like yes. the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> That's why. Thank you for liking the story, sir. Bro, I have delivered, I have delivered so much great content that. It's insane. Like it's insane. And when I hear people, I, when I hear comics, I'm never, I'm never about people not knowing who I am because it's millions of people. That's true. But, absolutely but, right. But when it comes to comedy, yes, I'm a fucking juggernaut. With, with some real monsters, man. I too yeah. with the Kings. You know, I've been on stage with Sid, DL, and Bernie Mac at the same time. It's always been a camaraderie. Right. You know what I mean? We're going out here to give the people the best show we can give them, and that's the way we've always promoted comedy shows. Now, you know, to turn this into some type of little beef, that ain't got nothing to do with me. That ain't how I do. Now, you know, I done heard all of the YouTubes and I done heard all the interviews and all like that, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. So this is a little beef thing that everybody want to want to start because you want to make a name for yourself. That's cool. Do you? You ain't going to do it right here, though. You, you, you ain't going to build a reputation on Steve Harvey. So I've been doing this a long time. So now whatever you're going to do is cool. Just do you. You do you. So I have nothing to prove. All I got to do is keep being Steve Harvey that he's been for over 20 years yeah. or walking out there on stage yeah. and bringing that sunshine. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring it. But, you know, when you hear all the chatter, you know, it, it kind of, you go. So it kind of hit you? Kind of like, I mean, it was all on the what? Yeah. For what? But, you know, like I always And we say, love you. Bro, look here. We little love dogs, you. Little dogs bark the most. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> now. Please understand that a rock wild that got off the plane last night in Detroit. See, here's, here's what my father told me. The reason I ain't been coming into town getting all of this back and forth. Yeah. This is what my father told me a long time ago. Dogs. Don't bark at park cars. <laughs> you understand? They only bark at a car that's moving. But now when you run your little ass over there and you and the car stop, you got to get right back up on your porch. Because that car now, the car might start up again. Don't get your little tail mad. <laughs> but you know, it's like this though, friend. You know, I always been real cool with Cat. You know, it, 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 it should have been like this. You know, if you're going to take that angle, yeah. what you should have did was call your boy and say, hey man, look. I'm just going to be selling some tickets. This is how I'm going to do it. Yeah. You know, but let me know. Because we're going to use my name as the stepping stone. Mm -hmm. So you can, like he say, try to prove that he number one. Right. I took my family on vacation. You know, I was out with my kids playing and stuff. You know, we've been hanging out. I come back. All this stuff on YouTube. All these interviews over Detroit. All these radio stations. I got family up here. Friends. Yeah. You know, Steve, man. When you going to say something? I don't got to say nothing. I am the original Kings of Comedy. That's right. I can go with that right there. All now, right. until you have sold them kind of tickets. Move them numbers. And you done been on the stage with some more gorillas. See, it's cool when you've been the only gorilla on stage. Yeah. But I've been on stage with more gorillas. When you've been the only giant on the stage, and you got to share a stage with another giant, there should be a sense of humility about that. There should be a sense of respect. And right now, it just ain't no respect. You understand? Uh, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. The reason I stopped was because I seven shows 
on TV all at once. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story. Club Shay Shay, the interview heard around the world. <laughs> and I don't know, my it, my take is probably gonna be really, really boring. Um, number one, I want people to keep in mind, my dad has been dead for 15 years, so I have not been fully immersed in the world of comedy. I don't know the ins and outs of that like that anymore because my end has been gone for 15 years. You know, I've got friends in the game, but we don't sit and talk about, you know, stuff like that. So. Um, I don't know Cat Williams, uh, never met him. That's one person I never did get to meet when my dad was alive. But from everything that I've ever heard my dad, you know, say, he's always seemed like a stand-up dude, so I have no qualms, no quarrels with him. Um, I thought the interview was hilarious, entertaining. That man dropped so many uh, one-liners that I'm sure we are going to be wearing down to the ground in this year of our Lord, 2024. But um, I, one of my biggest takeaways in watching people's responses was how people... We're kind of like, oh, that's kind of sad, like, outside of being, you know, tickled by it. And I've seen people say stuff like, it's like watching, you know, your uncles go at it. And you're like, oh, why can't we all just get along? Well, I mean, because everybody doesn't get along. Like, I think that's one of the misconceptions about comedians. And I guess it's due to the fact that what they do brings so much joy to others that the perception, the expectation is that behind closed doors, everybody gets along. Everybody just, it's just it's in love. And no, it's not. It's, they've always been competitive. Like, I, it's always been. 
as far as I've ever witnessed in watching my dad, it's always been um, kind of cutthroat. Like you'll have, you know, people beefing like same as in within your family, just cause y'all related don't mean y'all all get along, right? It's, comedy's no different. Um, but for me, Cat Williams has my utmost appreciation and respect for giving my dad his props and his flowers. And I felt like it was genuine. There are some people who have given, you know, my dad his flowers now that he's dead that I'm looking at like, you know, doggone well, he wasn't doing it when he was alive. And that, not just famous people, just people all across the board. As my dad used to say, you ever want to be loved by everybody? You ever want to be special? Just die. It's real easy to give lip service when somebody dies and you go, oh, they were so wonderful. And that's not how you felt when they were alive. But when Kat spoke of my dad, for me, I felt his heart. I felt that it was genuine and I appreciate it. Um, again, it's been 15 years since my dad's been dead. If you follow me at all, you know I've said this repeatedly. Like, it does my heart good to know that my dad was a stand-up guy. That the man that I knew him to be was who he actually was to people. Because that's the thing. Like, we can love people and think they one way and then find out later. No. And I say, like, in 15 years, if he was an asshole, somebody by now would have been like, eh, let me tell you about that, my love. So, <laughs> that, that is not the case with my dad. It makes me so proud. And I just really appreciate what I believe, the genuine love and respect that Cat Williams showed my father. It is so much appreciated, much love and mad props to Cat Williams. I would love to sit down and just have a conversation with Cat Williams because I think that would probably be mo the most entertaining and gem dropping conversation I probably would have in my life <laughs> outside of conversations with my dad. So yeah, so that's my take. Like I said, probably boring, but that's what I thought. Again, much love and respect to Cat Williams. <laughs> Steve Harvey here. Yeah, you thought I was gonna run, huh? Y'all wondering where Steve Harvey? <laughs> I know people been waiting on my response to what Cat Williams done said on Club Shay Shay. I was on Club Shay Shay before Cat Williams. See, the reason why I took so long, see, I had to pray to God to give me the strength not to get mad. God talked to me every day, every damn day. I've been in this business a long time, boy. See, <laughs> you done messed up with the wrong one. See, you just sitting there talking that bullshit to Shannon Shaw, talking about I couldn't be a movie star. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess you didn't see you got served. Yeah, that day was acting. Then you're going to say, I took Mark Curry's jokes and stole his show. Boy, yeah, boy, you got the nerve to call me Mr. Potato Head. Calling my ass Mr. Potato Head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! That was a good one. I ain't going to lie. That was a good one. But I digress. So what? I wore a wig. Huh? People asking, why did you wear a wig? Where and when did you get the wig? Whatever. But your ass thought that shit was real. Everybody thought my shit was tight. They thought it was a real hairline. Huh? See, cat? <laughs> You don't, you don't fuck with a dog. You a cat. I'm a dog, huh? We both from Ohio. Seth, you from Dayton, and I'm from, yeah, you guessed it, Cleveland. All day. See? You know what you done did? You done started a war. Yeah. Anytime, any place, boy. Anytime, any place. You know, I feel like a rapper. Yeah, this here's a rap battle. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna spit a couple bars for your ass, cat. Huh? Watch this. I'm gonna show you some real skill, boy. See, you done fucked up, boy. Better watch your ass. <laughs> that damn interview might be your last. <laughs> Talking all that shit. And telling them lies. <laughs> I see your ass in the street, boy. I'm about to swell up them eyes. Yo, I don't give a damn what people say about Steve. But I'm going to get that money. You best believe. Yeah. You got one more time to fuck with me, little dude. Because this here going to be a real family feud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm telling you that right now. Oh, yeah. Williams family. Harvey family. Let's play the feud. Survey set. Cat Williams. If you're ever around him, ask him. How much money has he ever, how much money has he given away? Just given away. I like just ask him that. Just be like, how much money have you given away? If you're around him, if you're interviewing him, just ask him. Because it has to be insane. Cat is one of the most generous people that you're ever going to meet. And a lot of people don't know that. He don't get a lot of press and love for that. One of the most generous ever. He's had to have given away I don't even know the number. It has to be crazy because there's a lot of people with stories about him giving money to. Case in point, I remember I, remember I was at the comedy store performing one night, and got off stage. And this was like early on, early on before really a whole bunch of stuff was happening <clears throat> for me. I get off stage and I'm everybody like, man, good set, good set, good set. So many people saying that some girl came and put something in my hand and said, good set. But I didn't see her. I just heard her and she walked off. And I thought it was like a phone number in my hand. And when everybody walked away and stuff, I looked in my hand and it was a thousand dollars. And then I looked out in the audience trying to find the girl. And I'm like, man, I can't remember her face. And I couldn't see her. And I was just like, who gave me a thousand dollars? But anyway, I just was like, wow. 
And later on, about a month later, somebody told me that that happened to them. And they said Cat Williams was an audience. And I put two and two together and was like, wow, he did that to me then. He never tell you. He never, he never makes it known or any of that. So if you ever around him, ask him. If anybody, if you ever around him, ask him, how much money have you just given away? The real shit, bro. I came home, I ain't have nothing, bro. Cat Williams called me to his show. Uh, gave me front row seats, bro. Called me to his show. And when I was leaving the show, I thought he threw me some weed in the car because it was wrapped up in a towel. But it was $15,000, bro. And I, and, and bro, when I see him, I'm going to return the favor, bro. Whatever I got in my pocket, bro. Like That dude did something for me, bro. That I get emotional talking about it, bro. Like I really needed it at the time. And I wouldn't stay in nowhere. I mean, I was staying at a hotel with my kids in downtown New Orleans. I ain't even have a nowhere to stay there yet, bro. And uh, no, I had just got I had just got the house. I was at the house. I had just rented the house from Baby. And uh, Cat Williams gave me fifteen thousand dollars, bro. All hundreds, bro. I thought it was weed. My boy City say, "Ooh, them." Gave you some weed and threw it back there. I unwrapped the towel with the rubber band. It was $15,000, bro. <laughs> bro, man, bro. I'll never forget that, bro. I just want to see him and give him $15,000, bro. Like, <laughs> nigga, a real nigga for that, bro. You know, <laughs> nigga, and they ain't even know me before I went in, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Ain't give me nothing when I came home. Who was hollering free boosted? And ain't give me nothing when I came home. It touched me, bro. It touched me, bro. Like, and they gave me fifteen thousand dollars, bro. They had my hollering free boosted all over the world with that bag, and ain't give me nothing, bro. That dude gave me fifteen thousand dollars, bro. Cat Williams is a ring, is a real nigga, dog. Then he did it. Then the way he did it. He, he threw it in there, bro, and just left and just was gone. He ain't say, huh, bro? He ain't say, he just threw it in the window, bro. I opened it, bro, a little bit down the road, so I couldn't even turn and say thank you. I couldn't even, man, bro. i never forget that dude, bro. If, bro, if he fall, he always got me, Jit. If he fall, he always got me, bro. He'd come get it from me. And ask the right questions and cat just he I, I like that he didn't try to keep talking over uh cat Williams, which made it a great interview because sometimes the the person the interviewer can make it about themselves. And I think Shannon did a good job of sometimes he I'm pretty sure he had more questions and he wanted to jump in, but when Cat Williams wanted to finish a point, he didn't stop him, he let him go. So that was a, that's what made it a really good interview. Cat exposed the whole industry. You ain't so crazy, KB. I'm trying. I'm trying to tell you. I said I think that there's no more talented guys. They keep the talented guys at the bottom, and they say that they're crazy. They say that they're nothing. They say that they're bust, and then they leech off of them and get somebody else to remix what they're saying and what they're doing. They stand on their shoulders and they do it on the big white companies. I've been saying this since I came to the internet. The go along, get along gang is real. They want to harvest talent. They harvest everything. Cat Williams said that Cedric the Entertainer took his joke and put it on the main stage. And guess what happens in real life? After Cedric the Entertainer says it in his own way, because all they do is remix your, your same joke. And then they say it on a bigger platform. And then now it becomes theirs. You copying them now. There's no talented people no more. Them people that want to get into super famous, they buy their way in and they give up their ass, they, their anus to get in. Now, I've been saying this for the last three years, but when you have a person like Cat Williams that say something like this, that they grouped up against them. Remember when, remember when I said there's a go along, get along game? Cat Williams said that these guys stayed in a group they grouped up against them. He mentioned Cedric the Entertainer. He mentioned Steve Harvey. 
and he mentioned Ricky Smiley. He talked about gatekeepers. All of what I said, this man has said. And he's been saying, we don't got no more people like that. They stay in groups of hate. They find other people like them now. In this day and age, if you a f***ed up off the wall person, you find other people that's f***ed up off the wall like you. And then you join their group because everybody needs somebody, right? There are some celebrities you bet not say nothing about or you will have a mob of strangers. I'm talking about a whole mob of strangers after your ass. And you won't even know what happened. But it ain't no go along, get along game. Ain't no go along, get along game. <laughs> it's a mob of strangers after you say something about Rihanna, Cardi B, Beyonce. Oprah, man, there's some 40, 50 year old ladies that are goddamn take off their pearls for Oprah. There's some 60 year olds that'll hit you with a cane by Oprah. I noticed, I find it mighty strange that um, Cat Williams is supposed to be crazy, supposed to be all these derogatory names. He's a, he's a drug addict. He's all these things. They already invalidated him, right? The man do a million something views in, in seven, eight hours. And then every, almost every comedian respond to him. Almost every comedian he talked about, the ones that he went in and on, they responded to him quickly. And then not only did they respond to him, I, I noticed something else that maybe y'all didn't notice. I noticed they didn't respond to what he actually said. I noticed all they did was talk about how he might be mad or get anger out of his heart. They never addressed the things he said. Cat Williams used it as a, uh, Kevin Hart used it as a chance to promote his movie and, and said that the man had, had some hate in his heart. But we can look at the timeline of Kevin Hart to where I do remember you saying very boldly that your brand, you got to have boundaries. And this was your words. This is not me taking Cat Williams' side or nothing like that. Your words, before you got all that money, right, your words was you got to have boundaries. You got to have boundaries that you just won't go past because I have a brand. And, I, and let, me, let me say I'm paraphrasing, even though I think I'm stating it verbatim. But let me say I'm paraphrasing because you got a lot of money. So I'm paraphrasing. So this might not be verbatim, but people can go hear you say something like this. Yeah, you got to have boundaries. Yeah, yeah, I got a brand. And my brand is everything to me. I got to protect my brand. Before he got that big money, he said he would never wear a dress. Two years after... He wore that dress. He signs a big deal. How? He said he wouldn't do it, but he ended up doing it. Williams was trying to always say, Brandon, Brandon don't wear a dress. Because <laughs> P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. Oh, gee, or is this no, he was saying it in the media, so I thought he was heckling me. He was really trying to help me at the time. I didn't know that. <laughs> I was immature. Right. I feel like, dang, why? I'm trying to, uh, just trying to make it. Why are you bashing me? And then he was trying to warn me, you know, don't get in the dress. So the awakened brand and you couldn't pay him a trillion dollars to get in the dress. Message. Yeah. You know, for me, I can only speak for my journey. Once I put the dress on and I had that fire, that fire was put out. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah. And I only did it one time. So imagine doing it three times, four times. But then Tyler Perry did, he got stronger. I don't know the rules. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, this is what happened to me. I'm not here to knock another brother because that's their path. Yeah. That's one thing I don't do is knock my brothers because that's their path. But I'm saying my path, when I put on a dress, it came with a, 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 a demon baby mama and a starter kit for, for hell. Messy! That's what happened to me. You haven't seen me since, to be honest. But then I, 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 I feel stronger though. Would you like warn other 
stand-up comedians about a dress. Yeah, I had an interview too where I, 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 I would do it. I would Cat no, her ex is Cat Williams. Definitely is. What was it like dating Cat Williams? Outside of all the crazy antics and the FBI raids and, you know, the going to jails and stuff. <laughs> Wait, you were you there during the FBI raid? Yes! The, so, like, if you were there and the FBI I got a gun in. pointed at my chest and was told to stand up at, like, 9 in the morning. My ass was walking around because I had a, I probably had got busy. I had a t-shirt on. Mm -hmm. And I had to get down on like a floor and it was like lasers and scopes at my chest. Mm -hmm. And it was the scariest of my whole entire life. And I was definitely traumatized after an FBI raid. And then I had to go and like stand trial because he had like a whole thing. And FBI was after me. I, left I feel like they be with Cat Williams. They do. They, they don't like him. They do. Do you miss Cat Williams? <laughs> I miss his wisdom. Oof. I like that. I like that. His guidance, his hand on me. Mm. And, he, and if anybody's worked up with Cat or they knows Cat, they know that he can put a hand on you and help guide you. He's guided so many comedians to the next He's level. He's a very intelligent He's, brother. He had the highest IQ test score that you can ever get. Cat wow. has it. Mom is a doctor and his dad is like a, like a scientist. Like Are you he, serious? Yeah, he's... I had no idea. Was he really like a pimp? No, no, no. <laughs> not necessarily not a pimp. Or... He was selling a paper route. He was like, kind of like whatever, trying to hustle. And he was throwing papers to like a house, and it was a house full of prostitutes. And their pimp had just got shot, and then he wanted to kind of save the women because they didn't know what to do. So he kind of took some women under his and, wing and, and helped them get right. some money. <laughs> yes. Shout and out that, to Cat. Yeah. <laughs> now, and, now, why did you and Cat split up? Just all the legal stuff. Like it was, it started to become overwhelming, it was too and, much. I, and I felt That's like. Fair. Is my future going to revolve around constant arrests, constant raids, constant... I mean... It's I, a wild I, life being with Kat. I had to go in front of a grand jury and testify in front of a grand jury in LA um, about uh, his tax evasion thing that he almost did a lot of time for. I had like I was hiding under my mama's uh, stairs at one point because the FBI Damn. were at her house trying to get me to testify against Kat. Like, it was, it was that was lot. after an FBI raid. Right? This is a whole other situation, right, right, right. you know? I left the country because they you just were, didn't want to get involved. Didn't want to get involved, right. and I don't know nothing. I don't, I don't Shout out to you for holding it down, though. She, oh, yeah. she a rider. Oh, Angela her. is a rider. Just say if Cat Williams, you know, back with you, would you be open to a relationship with Cat Williams? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>